Welcome to the Pro Bono Project video presentation on how to fill out mandatory expungement forms CR-180 and CR-181 for record clearance in California. For an explanation of what record clearance slash mandatory expungement is, please see our YouTube video presentation on this subject. To receive mandatory expungement, if probation was successfully completed or terminated early, most convictions are eligible for mandatory record clearance. However, there may be exceptions in your case. There are two situations where mandatory expungement is in play. One, you received probation as part of your sentence and either completed it or were released early. You are not currently serving or under supervision for another offense and you are not currently charged with another offense. Or two, if you did not receive probation and one, you have fully complied with the terms of your sentence, two, one year has passed as the date of your conviction, three, you are not currently serving or under supervision for another offense, and four, you are not currently charged with another offense. The information you will need to start expungement and or the record clearance process, you will need the date of your convictions, the code section you were convicted of violating, as well as the code name you were convicted of violating. This information can all be obtained from your record of arrests and prosecutions or your rap sheet. To learn how to obtain your rap sheet, please check out our short video presentation on how to get your rap sheet on this YouTube channel. A reminder here to always be aware of whether or not you have outstanding warrants for your arrest prior to being fingerprinted or filing anything with the court. You can find the information by checking with your public defender or the probation department in your local county. In most California counties, you can use forms CR-180 and CR-181 to petition an order for dismissal for mandatory record clearance. After you obtain your rap sheet, to begin the process, you need to get these court forms CR-180 and 181. You can obtain the forms you need from the court clerk at the local criminal courthouse in your county or from the California court website. You will need a separate set of forms for each court case, but you can file one form for multiple convictions seeking clearance within a particular case number. Mandatory petitions for record clearance generally have to be filed in the county where your conviction occurred. If you move while on probation and your probation was moved too, you will likely file in the county where you finished your probation. Please check with your local authorities such as the Public Defender's Office or the County Probation Office. There are currently no filing fees in Santa Clara County for record clearance petitions. Check with your local probation department about fo possible filing fees in the county where you are. Finally, when filling out these forms, please be aware that you are both the petitioner and the defendant. So wherever those terms are used, it refers to you. Form CR-180, Petition for Dismissal. On the top left corner, write in your name, address, telephone number, and email address. Where it asks attorney for, write in self-represented. Where it states the people of the state of California versus, write in your name, as shown as your case record, and also your date of birth. Write in your case number for cases you are seeking to have cleared, such as CC123456. Leave blank the date, time, and department. On page one, box one of form CR180. Write in the date of conviction this is often different from the date of arrest and is found on your rap sheet. In the boxes below, the first full line, write in the name of the code you were convicted of violating, such as, such as penal code or vehicle code, etc. 
In the next box, write in the particular section of the code you are convicted of violating, such as 240. Write in whether your conviction is a felony, a misdemeanor, or an infraction. The next box is asking if your conviction was a felony, and if so, whether it's eligible to be reduced under Penal Code Section 17B. If your felony is a wobbler, it is eligible for reduction to a misdemeanor. A wobbler is one that can be charged as either a felony or a misdemeanor. You can find out if your felony is a wobbler by looking at the Penal Code section and if you could have been sentenced to either county jail or time in state prison, it is a wobbler. Depending on your circumstances, write in yes or no. The last box asks if your conviction was a misdemeanor and if it is similarly eligible for it to be reduced to an infraction under Penal Code Section 17D. The list of offenses eligible for reduction from misdemeanor to infraction is found in Penal Code Section 19.8, subsection A. According to your circumstances, write in yes or no. On form CR 180, page one, box two, if you were convicted of a felony or misdemeanor and probation was granted, check box two. If you fulfilled all the conditions of your probation, check box A, or if you were released early from probation, check box B. If you did not fulfill the conditions of your probation for whatever reason, check box C. In this case, it does not mean your petition will not be granted. However, you must explain to the judge why your petition should be granted in the interest of justice. This is what is deemed discretionary record clearance and is beyond the scope of this presentation. On page two of form CR 180, at the top, write in your name in the header at the top of the page as is shown on your case record and also include your case number as shown on your case record and also the front of the first page. For page two of box three, if you were convicted of a misdemeanor or an infraction and you were not given probation, check box three. If more than one year has passed since the date of the judgment and you did not receive probation and you are not currently serving another sentence, under supervision for another sentence, under charges for another offense, and you have complied with all the terms of your sentence, check box A. If you do not meet these requirements, then you would check box B. Again, that moves your petition from the mandatory category to discretionary. As stated, discretionary petitions are beyond the scope of this presentation at this time. For page two, boxes four, five, and six, these sections are also beyond the scope of our presentation as they are for discretionary petitions for record clearance, which are in the interest of justice. For form CR 180, page three. At the top of the page at the header, write in your name as it is shown on your case record and the case number as shown on the first page. Look down to box seven. If you receive a deferred entry of judgment for your offense, check box seven. In the first paragraph, write in the date the charges were dismissed. Check box A or B depending on your circumstances. If you check box B, indicate whether you have or have not attached your rap sheet to this petition. Write in the date and sign the petition. Below that, write in your address and with the city, state, and zip code. The next form is CR 181, Order for Dismissal. The bulk of this form is filled out by the court after it makes a determination regarding record clearance. However, you should still fill out the information in the top left as on the other form. Write in your name, address, email, telephone number, where it asks attorney for, write in self-represented, where it states people versus, write in your name as shown on your case record. Also include your date of birth and the case number 
that you put on form CR-180. On the top of form CR-181, page two, again, write in your name as shown on your case record and the case number you are seeking to have cleared. After the forms are completed, you will need to file and serve the mandatory record clearance forms CR 180 and 181. To file the petition with the court, make three copies. Take the copies with your original document to the clerk's office of your local criminal courthouse in the county where you are filing. The clerk will file stamp the documents, return a copy to you, and assign you a hearing date. Serving the forms means copies of the petitions must be given to both the district attorney's office and the local probation department. You will need two separate proofs of service, form POS 040, one for the probation department and one for the district attorney. You can get form POS 040 from the clerk's office in your local courthouse or the California court website. On the top, fill in your name, address, and telephone number. On the line where it states attorney for, write in self-represented. Where it asks Superior Court of California, County of, write in the county in which you are filing. Also include the street address, city and zip code, and branch name of the courthouse where you are filing. For plaintiff, write in the people versus the state of people of the state of California versus your name as shown on your case record in the box for case number print your case numbers as shown on your case record for example cc123456 the proof of service forms can be served by mail or personally Check which form of service you choose. The forms must be served by someone over the age of 18, not you. This could be a friend, neighbor, or family member. For box two, write in the complete address of the person serving your record clearance forms. On box four, write in the date your forms were served and specify the documents as CR 180 Petition for Dismissal, CR 181 Order for Dismissal. For number five, in this section, write in either, if prosecuted by the district attorney, print the district attorney of the city where your case was tried. If prosecuted by the city attorney, write in the city attorney of the city where your case was tried. Check box B. Write in the complete business address of the district or city attorney who prosecuted you. On page two of the proof of service, at the top, write in people of the state of California versus your name as shown on your case record and your case number also as shown on your case record. If serving by mail, check box 6B and 6B1. Below that section, have the person who served your forms print his or her name and sign and date them. If the person serving your forms is serving in person, under the declaration of messenger, check by personal service. Then they need to sign and date the forms. They, you will need a second proof of service for the county probation department where your conviction occurred following the same procedure. Follow these procedures, but instead of the district or city attorney, you will indicate the county probation office of the particular county and its address. The signed copies of the proofs of service must be filed back with the court clerk's office in the county where you are filing your petitions. Some final notes. If your petitions are only for mandatory clearance, you will not hear anything else from the court, 
but should receive a document in the mail stating that your record has officially been changed. You should wait a few weeks and then check with the Department of Justice to review your RAP sheet to make sure the changes have occurred. Thank you for listening to our video presentation on how mandatory record clearance forms CR 180 and 181.